up everyone, Bill Wheeler here, episode five of A Bike and a Beer. The show where every Saturday I take a vintage motorcycle and I talk about it while I'm drinking an appropriately paired beer. A little bit different bike this week than the ones we've been doing, but this one's very near and dear to my heart. It's the bike that got me into vintage motorcycles. It's a custom bobber that I built over 10 years ago now, and it's built around a 1974 Harley Davidson Ironhead, which, as the title insinuates, is actually quite reliable. Um, so what beer to go with this bike? Well, I've got the perfect one. It's none other than Harley beer. What? Harley makes beer? Kinda. But in 1985, they produced Harley beer, and it's perfect to represent this bike because 1985 was the very last year that Harley Davidson produced the iron head. So, uh, I thought about drinking it, but uh, I figured it'd be cooler to give it away. So, I'm gonna give away this six pack of 1985 Harley Davidson beer to one of the subscribers on this account. All you have to do is subscribe to Wheelhouse Garage, the YouTube channel, and just comment on any one of the videos that you subscribed, and uh, I will pick a winner this week. And if you've already subscribed, all you have to do is comment. So, what do I drink instead? Well, come to find out that in 1985, Paps Brewing Company actually made this beer. So, thank you, honey. We're going to drink a Paps Blue Ribbon today. Oh, yeah. Tastes like pure America. So as I mentioned, this is really where it all started for me. I saw some wheels peeking out under a tarp at my wife's uncle's house down in Felton, California. And uh, we lifted the tarp and there was a this bike pretty much in stock form. It was broken. My uh, uncle, my wife's uncle had been riding the hell out of it like a dirt bike, which I love him for. It had a broken shift shaft. And I said, what are you doing with that bike? And without hesitation, said nothing take it so I said are you serious all right so I took it back I had no garage at the time so I rebuilt the transmission in a little shed behind my house and uh, got it running and uh, took it for a ride around my neighborhood and I just kind of fell in love with the sound and the feel and the whole thing and that's really what got me started on vintage bikes so these motors these thousand cc iron head motors which are basically the offspring of the K model Harleys, they get a bad rap. And I have to say that I haven't experienced uh, the stigma of the motor that gets made fun of more than uh, a kid riding a scooter at a skate park. It's been a really great motor for me. It's really given me no problems and it's consistently started first or second kick, really no matter what I do to it. I've let it sit for over a year with bad gas in it, fires right up. I'll talk about why I think that is in a second, but this motor was in production for a long time, 57 through 85, that's a long run. And I think part of the issue with why this motor gets a bad rap is probably because, um, you know, in after 69, uh, AMF owned Harley, American Machine and Foundry, which were basically known for sporting goods, especially bowling items. And I think that kind of just contributed to the stigma that these are not real Harleys. They're not, uh, you know, they're not made as well, even though this motor was already really founded in, in 1957. So um, I have just, I've had a great relationship with this motor. I've come to love it and become a fan, really. The reasons I think this bike really runs so well, there's two reasons. One, it's got an electronic ignition, which I'm a big fan of. Points are cool, but this works more consistently as long as you don't mind having a little battery most of the time. Um, the other reason is because it has a British carburetor on it. That's right. I love British stuff. This is an SU carburetor. Really, really cool piece. Um, and I think this is part of why the spike runs so well. Now, these carburetors, if you're familiar with something like a slide carburetor, like a Makuni or an Amel, um, or most beings, these operate totally differently. Um, they operate with a variable Venturi. So I'm gonna put a link to a guy that does a phenomenal job explaining it. But basically, um, 
the throat of this carburetor is the same size all the way through and the the air and fuel mixture is sped up by a piston in here that goes up and down according to um, how much you open and close a butterfly valve here on the back side it's an amazing process basically what it does is makes it so there's only one jet with a tapered needle and as you twist the the throttle and the butterfly valve opens uh, the piston rises up and pulls up this tapered needle that lets more fuel in and the airspeed increases and, and can grab that fuel it's a really really cool way to uh, well kind of simplify a carburetor it's just a different way to slice bread and it works really well and I think it compensates for maybe some of the other downfalls that other regular slide carburetors have. This is a custom motorcycle, so let's talk about what's going on here. Um, I started out with a Paco frame. I didn't want to do a weld on rear section. I just wanted to start out with a nice solid geometry frame, so that's what I did. That's from Paco. Um, these forks are actually from a little bit more modern Sportster, like 99 through 2001. I think they're 39 millimeter forks, and they allowed me to put a bigger, heavier duty caliper on, which made it a little bit safer. When I got this bike, uh, my whole family kind of thought I would just get on it and die. So I tried to take a couple of safety measures. Uh, the other safety measure I did was was making was flipping the controls. 74 was the last year that the shifter was on the right and the brake was on the left. In 75 they made the law that that had to be flipped for every motorcycle made. So in 75 and 76 Harley kind of had like a like a retrofit where they, they had this mechanism here, which I found on eBay. It took me a little while, but I found it. And it makes it so the brake can go on the right. I put this cable together and then I used, um, uh, I made a linkage so that you could have the shifter on the left. It works pretty well. It's kind of long and a little bit annoying to look at, but uh, it works. This amazing tank with vintage paint on it and this badass hand painted clover three leaf clover because we don't need no luck baby this keg style oil tank came from bison motorsports this rear ribbed fender came from lowbrow but i've obviously chopped it and clearanced it the wheels invader wheels front and rear those are eight spoke rear uh, i believe those are 10 spoke front uh, big heavy monsters that roll down the road nicer than you think they would. Big old 5.0 by 16 Firestone in the rear, 19 inch Avon Speedmaster in the front. I made these pipes actually. I pie cut um, some drag pipes that I had and made these shotgun style exhaust. I think I bought the trumpet ends from Lowbrow 2 and wrapped them up. This tail light is badass. This tail light came from like a 1930s Chevy sedan and also found that on eBay. Just kind of fell in love with the cool teardrop shape of it made a mount for it made it work made the license plate bracket as well a couple other brackets like to hold the coil and stuff um i just tinkered man i, I didn't have any money to build this thing i just kind of had pieces of metal laying around like these handlebars i made these handlebars out of a piece of tubing i had in my garage I actually filled it with sand and heated it up with an oxyacetylene torch even though it's got like two degrees of bend in it i probably could have just bent it and not worried about it uh, it's got a doherty throttle which i had no idea it was at the time but now of course i do uh this headlight this is kind of a funny story i went to a chopper shop that was going out of business i found this same headlight which comes like off of a tractor or a boat or something and he wanted $250 for it I'm like sorry man I'm not paying that much that very weekend at a swap meet someone had the same headlight it worked the bulb worked and he wanted five dollars for it so obviously I bought it it's sweet it's got these cool fins this mirror I made this mirror I cut the top off of one of those caps that you put on an acetylene bottle while it's while you're like transporting it um, and then just adhered a bubble mirror into the back of it. So that's kind of funny. Works pretty well. You know, it's a bobber. It's made with what I had and, and it's just been no trouble. It's fun for everyone to look at. It sounds great and I'm into it. So with all that said, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We'll be back next Saturday with another bike. 
Please subscribe if you like it. Um, I would love that. It's super helpful to the channel. Don't forget, make sure you subscribe and then comment because I'm going to be giving away this cool six pack of 1985 Harley Davidson beer. I'll reach out to you once I pick a winner and get your mailing address and send it on out to you. That's all I got, folks. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Saturday. Bottoms up.